Another day, another set of COVID questions, and another opportunity to get answers from Dr. Isaac Bogosh, infectious disease specialist at the University Health Network in Toronto. And, and Dr. Bogosh, first of all, let's talk about the National Advisory Committee on Immunization. They've upgraded their, their guidance for kids 5 to 11. Uh, they've gone from that the, those children uh, could get COVID vaccines to should. That's just a word, but what do you think the impact will be? It's a big deal. It is a big deal. It also reflects uh, how much we've learned about these vaccines over the past few months, especially given that there's been over 8 million doses of these vaccines in the United States alone, demonstrating the safety and the effectiveness of the vaccine. And on top of that, it also recognizes the importance of the Omicron wave that we're in. And while kids tend to not get as sick as adults, some kids do get sick and there, there is a real rise in pediatric hospitalizations. And we know these vaccines can certainly reduce the risk of that. You know, on Sunday on CBC Radio and Cross Country Checkup, we heard from a lot of parents, some of whom have had the vaccines themselves, but many of whom are really reluctant to give a vaccination to their kids. What would you say to them? There's just an enormous amount of data demonstrating the safety and the uh, effectiveness of these vaccines, especially in the 5 to 11-year-old uh, population. Millions and millions of doses now administered around the world in Canada and, of course, outside of Canada. And, you know, I think if anyone still has concerns, that's completely okay. That's completely normal. We all want to do what's best for our children. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile to sit down with your health care provider to discuss those concerns and have them addressed. Second topic, uh, viruses, as many of us have been learning, keep mutating. And now apparently there's a new variant of the Omicron variant. I've been trying to read up on this, Dr. Bogosh, but I can't figure out how concerned we should be. So let me put that to you. What's your view? Yeah, so this is the BA2 sublineage. So under the Omicron uh, umbrella, there's a couple of lineages. We've got BA1, which we have mostly in Canada, and then BA2. We still have a few of these cases here in Canada. What's being seen around the world is that this is, is growing and it's, it's spreading more quickly than the BA1. It might be more transmissible. What's unclear right now is, you know, does it have any other meaningful differences? And I think it, with perhaps a little bit of informed speculation, it's probably likely that the vaccines will have the same degree of F, uh, effectiveness against this. It probably doesn't cause any significant difference in clinical syndrome, but it probably is more transmissible. And again, that's just informed speculation right now. It's certainly something to keep an eye on because this might change as we learn more. Okay, so maybe not a variant of a variant, but the cousin of the variant. In any event, uh, still a lot more to learn there. And uh, I, I want to ask you about one more thing, and that is uh, the news that Pfizer is working on a vaccine specifically aimed, as I understand it, at Omicron. What's the significance of this? Yeah, it's a big deal. I think we have to ask ourselves, you know, what do we do moving forward from a vaccine standpoint? And there's a couple of different roads that lie ahead. For starters, maybe it's three doses of a vaccine and that's the end of that. We don't see any benefit from additional doses. There might be the option that, you know, maybe a fourth dose or sorry, a once a year dose might be helpful. Uh, and of course, if it's an annual dose, you can have that vaccine really tailored to the variant de jour. Uh, and lastly, maybe you don't need a dose once a year. Maybe you need a booster every few years uh, if uh, your uh, protective immunity wanes or if a variant emerges where that's required. So there's several potential roads that lie ahead. I think the key here is having good data to drive future vaccine policy and future vaccine rollout. And that's exactly what the company is doing. They're developing an Omicron specific uh, vaccine and they're going to test to see if that provides meaningful benefit. Hey, we have 20 seconds left, so let me put this to you. Dr. Bonnie Henry, the public health officer here in BC, uh, late today saying, you know what, summer she thinks is going to look better. W what's your sense of that? I think spring's going to look better. <laughs> I think spring and summer is going to be great. Barring any unforeseen variants of concern, I think we're, we'll, we'll be in good shape as we exit the winter. Good. I like that prognosis even better than Dr. Henry's. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Bogosh. Be well.